on a feluca. Yes, we're on a feluca ride and we're going to go to the botanical gardens now and then afterwards we're going to be seeing a Nubian village. Yeah. Right. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. We are at the Botanical Garden. Yes. Built by Lord Kitchener. It was formerly used as a, um, a place where uh, the army would camp. And then after the army left, uh, he converted it into a botanical garden. And he collected plants and trees from all over and planted them here. So you have, you know, things from Somalia, things that are tropical. And it really is beautiful, very peaceful. And this is as old as a century, over a century, right? Oh, yeah. 18 something. Something, something. Yeah. Okay, we just arrived by boat, motorboat, to a Nubian village, which is African. And uh, so we are going to be seeing that aspect of Egyptian culture. It's Sina. Yes. And actually, people are very kind, very hosty. And then they will cook the coffee in there. Right. So this is, you stay the coffee is there, the black here, uh -huh. okay, in that one. And you take some of the spice. spices. Yeah. In there. Okay. So the other stuff that I told you about, and then you cook it slowly. And then that says something like what the Egyptian would love. The Egyptian loves tea and coffee. Yes, that's right. That's the young boy here. So what is he doing there? I'll tell you. All the new culture that they keep crocodiles is fresh in their homes, it keeps bad luck. Mom, <laughs> all the shouts for the kids. Yes. Don't, don't 
Uh, this is exactly see their house would look like well, that's the kitchen it's the house kitchen. go and have a look okay. don't be shy be afraid if you are very not very nice okay and those are the bedrooms one two of them very nice and Phil I like the the, the, the the ground is sad. Yes, go there. It's still part of the house. Go and have a look there, please. Oh, this is a big house. How many families live here? Uh, four generations. Four generations? Yes. Wow. This is amazing. Yes, that's what they do. But to make a living, they still some of their handmaids, like the this house is a weaver. So when you go up, you see some of the weaved scarves made of cotton like an old loom. We're having tea. Is this is the second floor. Yeah. Oh, wow. If you have the convenience of a fan, ceiling fan, written in English. This is just like you walk in the dark. Mm -hmm. Nice. Brick ceiling. And then you can see here. You can't really see. Right now we're in the Nubian house. And uh, the Nubians uh, actually come from one of the most powerful African tribes called Kush. And they inhabited this area. They did fishing, they did farming and they are uh, actually excellent gold makers. Uh, one thing about Nubian hobbits, they're very, very colorful. About four generations live together in one big sprawling house. So it's just like one house goes into another house, goes into another house, and each house has separate rooms. And one thing we found very, very interesting is that when Nubian men and women marry, the Nubian man goes to live with the wife's family. Whereas in the Arabic culture, it is the opposite. The husband and wife go to, to live in the husband's family's home. So I thought that was really very interesting. And um, yeah, very, very different from the traditional Arabic culture. But the homes are just very, very nice and very, very hospitable people. And what they do is that they open their house to guests because they want people to know about the Nubian culture, which is, you know, a very, very big part of Egypt as well. One more thing is that there's something like 45 Nubian villages right now, about like over a million of them, of 1.8 million Nubians. And um, yeah, so we're here visiting one of them and it's just a wonderful house. You can see the color. They're really good in textile manufacturing. So a lot of them do weaving and they have a loom and they weave and then they sell their wares to, to guests like us. <laughs> Okay, it's customary in Nubian homes uh, to have crocodiles, so they have pet crocodiles. And the reason why they have the pet crocodiles is to form good luck. So it's good luck, it brings good luck and protection for the home. So you can actually see the baby crocodiles here. 
There's a bigger one next door. And the real big one is right here. So this is kept within their home. Very interesting. Salt. Color salt. Look at the spicing. Was that net product? Oh, that's... Those are... Those are... Cancanines. Oh, we love spices. Oh, wow. Okay, right now, we're visiting, you know, famous scenes, you know, in the uh, Nubian village. And we've just come across a spice shop, and I can't begin to tell you how fragrant it smells here. So there, uh, this is actually, this place is known for its spices. The Aswan region of Egypt is the spice capital of Egypt. And a lot of people from Cairo come down here to buy spices. Mm. This, is, this is a tea, try, try it in your tongue. If you like this. something, tell me, I like this. On the Nile right now, going to our restaurant. But over there is a history, is a hotel called the Old Cataract, and it's where Agatha Christie wrote her famous novel, Death on the Nile. It used to be the one of the palaces, uh, summer palace of King Farouk of Egypt. That when he was deposed and uh, the Republic came into being, they converted this palace into a hotel. And again, that's where Agatha Christie wrote that famous novel. 